go once again we just don't quit you know it thanks for showing up again welcome back to the channel here we are back in Boston which was our last flight in an E-195 flying for JetBlue but guess what we are going to be flying for JetBlue again because they operate primarily out of these airports over here on the East Coast. Today we have a special livery here for our JetBlue Flight 318 with service from Boston to Pittsburgh. We are going to be flying this blueprint JetBlue livery. Thank you for the developer who uh, did this paintwork. This artwork is absolutely phenomenal. Let's jump on board. We are on the VATSIM network today and uh flying time today is about an hour and 23 minutes of course you guys always know we're flying with a full complement of passengers which that includes you on board so thank you for patronizing me via JetBlue for your virtual passenger tickets all right up top let's go ahead and throw these batteries on for sure one and two all right we have the gpu available which we will most certainly take advantage of and as usual, let's arm our emergency lights, get our nose smoking and fasten seatbelts on. Let's go ahead and get that nav light on. And it's a little dark, we'll put the logo light on. Um, and let's start tuning in to our frequencies as this aircraft initializes itself. All right, we're going to extinguish that master caution. And ATIS for Boston is actually 1350. So let's come down here to the FMS and let's type in 1350 on our COM2. And let's just verify that we are going to be getting the ATIS. Um, it's a little earlier to get the ATIS. I think uh, we will also program in the tower frequency. Not the tower, but the airport, uh, the uh, Boston approach frequency so center just left we have Boston approach at 1330 we actually don't even have ATIS anymore um, they just went offline which is no problem so let's go ahead and hit 133 dialed in for Boston approach and we'll get our clearance nice walking mode, Charlie. Boston Approach, JetBlue 318, looking for IFR to Pittsburgh. JetBlue 318, Boston Departure, clear the Pittsburgh Airport via the Revs 4 Departure, then as filed. Climb via SID, departure this frequency, squawk 3404. Cleared to Pittsburgh, Revs 4 Departure, Revs, then as filed. Climb via SID, departures this frequency, squawking 3404, JetBlue 318. Back is corrected, positive for taxi, expect runway TT left for departure and all of India up here shortly. Okay, roger that, uh, we're expecting 2 2 left uh, and we'll advise ready for taxi and you'll know, getting India for the weather, JetBlue 318. United 439, all right. runway 15 left on November. So, 15 left on November, United 439. We are three expecting... If I said TT left, then that was uh, my bad, you can expect TT right for departure. Okay, and you might not have said it, I might have erred. We're expecting 2 2 right for departure, JetBlue 318. Okay, so 2 2 right for departure. I don't know if he said right or left, but uh, either way, let's get him off there and let's get this thing initialized. So, first and foremost, you guys know we need to go to nav, we need to go to position initialization. We're going to load this last GPS position up, and now, of course, we're going to go to the route. We are at Austin. Logan International Airport and we are most certainly heading to Pittsburgh never flown into Pittsburgh so we're gonna do this thing today and our flight ID of course is JetBlue 318 service from Boston to Pittsburgh as promised we're gonna go over to our next page and we're gonna go ahead and get this route going here so then in order to just put in our departure first we're gonna come here and hit nav departure of course we already know what the run route the run route the runway is 22 right and we are most certainly leaving on the revs four with revs transition that's now should be in the route let's check the route it should be there and it is absolutely not <laughs> in there so let us do this first i tell you what we're going to do let's go back to the flight plan or let's go to the route and we're going to do it the opposite way let's put in all the points first like revs B 
SS, and this is actually how you're supposed to do it. You're actually supposed to put the points in first. I was kind of trying to do a shortcut, so shame on me. We're gonna go to center, uh, VOR, then HNK or Hotel November Kilo. From Hotel November Kilo, we're going to Kanje. Sounds like a straight up African name. Hey, where are you going? I'm going here, Kanje. Tell Kanje to come and uh, get his food in the morning, eh? Anyway, that's awesome. Then we're gonna take a Jetway 190. And then we'll be exiting that Jetway at Sierra Lima Tango or SLT. Booyah. Click to the next page. And then from there, we go into our arrival. So now let's try this situation again. Two to right. And I'm pretty sure I have to hit activate. So we'll just do that. Revs. Activate. Now we still need to go back to NAT. Well, first of all, let's look at the flight plan and make sure we don't have any discontinuities there or anything that is redundant. TJ, borrow, such as us, everything is looking good. You guys like that? Well, let's see here. Oh, yeah, because I was going back again thinking, oh, man, we're on the third page and this is showing up again, but there's only two pages. Duh. I'm stuck on stupid here for a second. Okay, now let's go to the arrival and get that plugged in, which is the Haze 6 with the Sierra Lima Tango VOR as a transition back to flight plan. Double check. There are no discontinuities. There don't look to be any continuities discontinuities in there and let's also double check the flight plan page and that looks 100% accurate now we're going to go to our performance initialization 7878 on the cruise descent everything looks good there those are in the blue once again as I stated last video you can change that we're going to say we got about 5,000 actually you know what not even we have let me look at my trusty dusty flight plan up here We've got roughly, uh, yeah, we've got, actually, you know what? It is five, about, well, we'll say 4.5. I will just say 4,000 pounds of reserve fuel. So no worries. Coming over here. Now, this is where we need to change our uh, flight level. We are flying due west, so those are even numbers. And transition altitude looks good and our gross weight is 103050 so as promised i'm always going to so 103050 so as promised i bring this chart in we are heavy so of course we're always going to take off flaps too and 105 we are going to go for these numbers right here so 145 on v1 committal speed 146 on rotation 147 safe climb out for lift 205 Everything up and clean and continuing to climb up to that cruising altitude and following the ATC's instructions, of course. Let me get that out of your way. And so now we can confirm this. Now we essentially need to come back to our, actually, we need to come back to our perf. Clicking all the wrong menus. And we need to go to takeoff here, of course. And we are essentially going to put in our flaps and also work on our pitch flaps too. And one more page over here. We are going to start typing in those figures. So 145 on V1. Then we said 146 V rotate. And our climb out speed, of course, is going to be 147. So there's disparities of two knots here and there. And our clean climbing posture will be at 205 pounds. I don't know why I put 202. Let's do 205. 200. Wow, it's not letting me uh, 205. You guys see that? I'm not even joking. I guess I guess it says 202. There's no 205. So whatever. Even though the chart said 205. You guys clearly saw that. Either way, we're not tripping. We got takeoff pitch going to 11. So we're going to do the takeoff pitch as well here for 105. Uh, now this one's interesting because there really is no 105 here. So check this out. Here's the disparity between the next two. So if you see 2.6, so that's about a difference of, let's see, we need to go up 2,000 pounds here. So clearly we can make this 2.2 uh, for sure. Um, so between these two, the 10 and the 12, because you know the 11 is right here. Um, if you look, we this number is too low. This number is too high. We're at 2.4 here and then down the 2.1. So if you take the difference between 3 and 1 and 1.5, we can essentially just make it... Uh, 
uh, 2.3 here, and we'll make this one uh, 2.4. So uh, let's see here. So between the two, we're going to do C3 and 1. So absolutely, uh, I'm going for 2.2, guys. I think that makes sense. Up. So let's do that now. So we'll come here. We're going to go up. Let's turn our hydraulic pump A on. Back down. And now let's go ahead and fix this uh, pitch trim up. Let's zoom in on this here. Okay, here we go. We're going to go 2.2 up. There we go, guys. We've got our 2.2 up. We will be putting this uh, for takeoff to flaps 2, of course. Everything on the MCP looks good. So now at this point, let's go up top and start our APU on. Then, of course, we're going to go ahead and alert everybody that it is almost time to get out of here. Now we're going to look over here. We're noticing our APU come up. Of course, we're going to hear a distinguishable ding. APU is up. Normally you do get that ding, that notification. We didn't this time, which is okay. Now that's available. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come here on our little interface here, and we are going to remove the ground power unit. Of course, now what we need to do is come over here to our MCP, and we need to get it set up. Again, this is not on FMS, so let's put this on FMS. So everything is going to follow the FMS. We need to put this on the map. So we see what's going on. Then, of course, we need to get our altimeter. We'll get the ATIS here in a second. Um, but we are climbing via SID. So essentially, we need to take a look at that SID right now. I'm just putting any altitude in there. But essentially, we need to come over here. And we need to look at our charts procedure here. So if we wanted to really take a look at what we're doing here on our departure and understand it completely, Let's check this out. He did say climb via SID, which is exactly what we're going to do. So we are leaving on runway 22 right, climb heading 215, to intercept course 143 to the TJ, which is a fix. Do not exceed 210 knots until 520 feet, then on depicted route to revs. So no big deal. So if you look at the initial heading of 215, we're running on, we're leaving on runway. Um, 22 you can see here's a heading of 215 so 22 right must be this little uh shallow runway right here the smaller one um so we'll head 215 um 215 degrees then it tells us to intercept course 143 um for the uh to tj so here's the tj so essentially we come off we are going to make a left turn direct to tj and then of course on and out the max uh, speed, of course, for some of these points. For example, once we get to Bro, is 250 knots. Now, one thing we need to do is also notice this. Look at this. Top altitude is only 5,000 feet. Um, so we'll adhere to that um, until we're in approach and until they give us higher. But otherwise, we are just going to only go to 5,000 feet. So it's important to always um, know what your top altitude, if they're saying climb via SID, because... Uh, you have to look at that top altitude and that's the only altitude that you're clear to if they don't give you, give you any alternate instructions. So there we go. And then we said the heading is supposed to be at, two, at uh, 215. So let's move that heading on over to 215. On the initial heading. Um, and our flight director is already on. So I'm thinking everything looks good. We got our V-speeds here. We got our pitch. So now what we want to do is just basically leave it on that. And finally, let's go outside and take a look. This airplane requires you to back it up yourself. So let's just look for a backup point. All right. So that is an active taxiway. So perhaps we will call to uh, push onto the taxiway, or maybe we'll just push back just a little bit. Uh, maybe we'll take the nose and we'll bring the nose, per se, just back enough right here to hit that so that we can make a clean turn and miss it without actually having to ask to be on this taxiway. 
that's not exactly how it be done in real life but that's how we're going to do it today just so that we can get out of here finally let me show you guys exactly where we're at on the airport on the field give you guys an indication of what our potential taxi route will be so here we are here we'll take all this out again we're at gate charlie 30 we're going to runway 22 right so if you look here he's probably just going to give us a taxi via alpha november november will culminate into 22 right and we can most certainly dust off and you can see there's the heading at 215 again which matches up with our standard instrument departure on the revs 4 so it's pretty simple so we'll just essentially push ourselves back slightly in a straight motion and then make that right turn and go alpha november and we're out of here so apu's on we're burning fuel and just wanted to show you guys that's what we're doing let's go ahead and jump back on board and get everything going so at this point parking brake is off so that means we can connect the tow so let's come here and let's engage the tow and before we move you guys almost let me forget we need to put our actual transponder code in of three four zero four and we're gonna make that active three four zero four and we're also going to um, go ahead and try to log on to the ATIS really quick just to see if that's up and active and let me see what that ATIS frequency is of course the ATIS frequency uh, is uh, still 135 so let's go ahead and tune into that as we push back just so we understand everything that is necessary for us to know on our departure. Two two left. departure two two right. Read my call hold short instruments and assigned altitudes. Hazardous weather information for New England area available on flight service station Rex. Numerous cranes in Boston area and in vicinity of All Logan right. Airport. Not sure what happened there. North is to airmen. And X system in use. There are bike walking low sea on all taxiways and runways. Advise on initial contact you have information India. Oh. Advise on initial contact. Let's try You'll this. You have information India. Park and break is up. Park and break is released. Let's try it. So India is current, of course. And we're doing Boston. some struggling here, as you can see. Let's go ahead and engage this again and try this one more time. There we go. It was just a little glitch with the brake. You guys saw that the brake was down, but no worries. This is the, this, you know what? Simulator problems. All I can say is that's uh, totally simulator problems. Go ahead and switch back over. And I think that should be adequate. Let's go ahead and stop. You can see there's another JetBlue. JetBlue uh, aircraft there. It's unengaged. Now let's actually put the parking brake up. Parking brake is all the way up now. And of course, let's go ahead and start number two. Lima Victor Delta 105, turn heading 040. Hopefully, we're not protruding into that taxiway alpha, but if we are, we'll go ahead and uh, understand we're going to get put on timeout. All right, that engine is essentially on and running. Let's get up our number one. Meantime, we'll put this in the reject to take off. And we'll also get our flaps to take off, which is flaps two. Our trims are all set. We do have 15,906 pounds of fuel, which is more than enough. Fuel to get where we're at. As you can see, that extinguishes. Engines are all up and running here in a second. This will reflect on the N1. Now, of course, we come up top and we can turn our APU off. Everything else is automatic. And we most certainly have our power there. That was just uh, a little differentiation between the APU shutting down and switching over to the uh, actual generators on the aircraft. I probably could have waited a second we wouldn't even got that beeping noise i just turned the steering on once again everything is set up once we get to the runway threshold we will go ahead and um put in our l nav and v nav and our auto throttle 
Everything is on the FMS and looking good. So let's go ahead and call for taxi at this point. United 661, cross runway T2 on non echo, contact ground. Cross runway 22 at on echo and contact ground, United 661. Boston approached at Blue 318, information India is ready to taxi. Blue 318, contact Boston, ground 121.9. Over to ground one two one nine. I will talk to you in a second. Jet blue three eighteen. Okay, so ground came on. Again, the exciting life of uh, flying on the VATSIM network. You never know who's on when they're on. I mean, you do, but you got to continually check the interface versus you know something like pilot. Roger, you just parking and alpha. Definitely uh, the Boston Ground, JetBlue 318, Information India is ready to taxi. JetBlue 318, runway 22 right, taxi Alpha November, cross runway 15 right, hold short, runway 15 left. Okay, 22 right, Alpha November, cross runway 15 left, hold short, 15 right, for JetBlue 318. Alright, so, let's get our, let's get our landing lights on here. I don't know why my uh, track IR doesn't want to show me up top. It's pausing right there, but that's okay. We'll just come up. The limits are probably done. I'll just use this and we'll do nose and side. Strobe is off. Everything else looks good. Steering has already been activated. Parking brake is released. All right. We've got this awesome line of cars here. Totally fake, but we're going to go right through them. Guess they had a Boston Logan traffic jam. All right, this is Alpha. Bit of an overcast day. There is some weather all throughout the northeast of the United States today, Thanksgiving Eve. All right, we're going to be looking for November. This is the one contact Boston approach one three three point zero. Good night. Contact approach one three three zero. Have a good night. Here comes November, of course. Follow the eye lead all the way around onto November. And we do have the approval to cross runway 15 right. We'll be holding short 15 left. Not quite sure if I got the left and the right on the actual read back. Because uh, it happens so quickly, but we'll see. Let's look both ways left, right, and uh, we were going to get some visibility on, but uh, track IR is acting funny, so we will just assume that we put that information on. Delta 2769, Squawk Boot, Charlie, runway 22 right, taxi Alpha November. Cross runway 15 right, hold short runway 15 left. Taxi, uh, Alpha November, hold short. Uh, cross 15 right, hold short 15 left. Still at 27. Mm, looks like we've got somebody from Ireland! Alright, this is where we've been told to hold short. So we will break. Boston Ground, JetBlue 318, holding a short runway 15 left. JetBlue 318, cross runway 15 left, on November, contact Boston, approach 133.0, good night. Okay, cross runway 15 left, uh, November, and we'll be contacting uh, departure for JetBlue 318, have a good one. All right. So let's do that. One Boston departure on the way 22 right clear for takeoff. 
Clear for takeoff, November 1. Yeah, we're gonna look left, make sure there's no one coming in, look right. Spirit Wings 1182, turn left heading 320 to center, maintain 3000, back just to final. All right. Left 320, no 3000, Spirit Wings 1182. As you can see, we got another aircraft over here waiting to take off. It's like a little private jet. Looks like a Falcon, Dassault Falcon almost over there as a private jet. here to the hold short bars you can see the orange light illuminating flashing saying hey don't pass me without any clearance it's a dangerous life you lead alright I don't see any inbound so he'll probably give us immediate clearance Boston departure jet blue 318 holding short runway 22 right ready for departure jet blue 318 Boston departure runway 22 right line up and wait 22 right line up and wait jump to 318. All right, so it is extremely busy. Strobes on, landing on, and we're going to line up and wait. One south, two passing. All right, so we'll and line up and wait. One, uh, uh, for spacing, of course. Four. Sorry, can't give you an accurate rating right now. Number Zulu 1, Roger, the Boston altimeter is 3026. All right, we need to get on that too. Thanks, November Zulu One. That's one thing we did forget to do. Three zero two six. All right. Once we take off, we we'll hit our auto throttle. Jetlag sixteen eighty six. Looks like it's gonna take you a little while to get down there. So speed your discretion. Roger, speed at discretion for 1686. All right. We'll go ahead and hold right here. And we'll just wait until he gives us the go ahead. Then we will most certainly take off and follow our flight director. Let's look around. Boston departure, November Zulu 1 at 2000. Uh, you wanted altitude. Spearing is low 92, turn left heading 250, join the localizer. 250, join the localizer, level 92. Jibli 1686, turn heading 150. All right, we're just. 150 for uh, Jibli 1686. JetBlue 318, runway 22 right, clear for takeoff. Runway 22 right, clear for takeoff, JetBlue 318. Alright, folks. November Zulu 1, radar contact, climb well, and maintain 14,000. And Here we go. We need to most certainly... Pick my speed up. November Zulu 1. Hit the auto throttles. I gotta make sure I don't redline it, which I did last flight on accident. We'll join the look, Leather 686. Zero wings 1192, looks like you blew through there. You're gonna be able to rejoin that. Do you need that? 80 knots. Alright, keeping downward the pressure on the yoke. Zero wings 1192, the center line. Roger, 5 miles from focus, descent of maintain 2000, until exception of local hazard, but I lost runway 22 to the departure. Descent of maintain 2000, all right. November Zulu 1, Zulu 1, 
250 knots. November 7th, one, Roger. All right. We are continuing to follow the flight plan there. We're going flaps up. Three eighteen. I can see you're starting to make the turn there, but you can fly heading one nine zero and just maintain three thousand for now. I have traffic that appears to be going a lot slower than you uh, right ahead of you. Okay, give us that again. We're going to go at one nine zero on the heading. And what was the speed you wanted us for JetBlue three eighteen? JetBlue three eighteen, maintain three thousand. Okay, we'll maintain three thousand heading one nine zero, JetBlue three eighteen. I keep my speed up for a uh, All right, so. Sure, wings are low at Speed is at your discretion. On my TT left clear to land. This All right, so we're only going up to three thousand. Roger, We're gonna keep it right at about two hundred. All right, gear is up. Flaps are up. Aircraft is going to be following a heading of 190, climbing 2000. So we'll keep our speed right at about 210. Just simply because. Uh, 318, turn right, heading 290. Right, 290, JetBlue 318. All right. Making our nice little turn. Sorry about that. Mouse keeps. Mouse keeps going in on me because I'm playing. When able, proceed direct revs. Climb to maintain one four thousand. When able, direct revs up to one four thousand. JetBlue three eighteen. All right, so. And now we can get our speed up, of course. And we're going to go direct revs, so we need to come down here, the flight plan, come over here, click on revs, go to previous, type that in, execute it, and we'll go nav. Now we should be direct revs, and we'll go up to 14,000. Definitely 1686, number 2, flying in an Airbus 320 on short final runway TT left air one. Copy at number 2, clear to land, up to 1686. Alright. Let's go ahead and get our speed up to 250. We can't put it in VNAV yet, just simply because he... Has given us an altitude of 14,000. Once he switches this over, we can go all the way up to flight level uh, 280. All right, folks, we have entered a cloud. Not much to see here, folks. Right. Let's look at our plan. Everything is good. Let's come back over here now. We're going to increase the range. Now you can see we have a range of 40 there. We're continuing to climb at 250 until we get to 10,000 feet. We can essentially probably pitch up a little more. Aircraft's engines can definitely handle it. We'll go to 2,200 feet on the climb. Aircraft's engines are only at uh, 79%. We'll see what they push up to. Sparing to 1192, welcome to Boston. Hold your runway TT right on the echo. Traffic with a port. All right. We're going to sit here and continue to climb. Still no visibility here. All right, looks like we got some cloud breakthrough.
we will probably have a nice cloudy trip the whole way because it looks like there is not severe weather but clouds throughout the entire uh, again northeast area We are just going to ascend and uh, wait for his instructions. Once we get to 10,000, we'll turn off the landing lights and we'll get the aircraft to essentially uh, pick up speed to uh, 290. Ground is 1182, cross an ITT on the echo, contact ground. Less than 1,000 to go. Go back real quick and take a look at the old passengers. Okay, thanks for your service. We'll go over to Uncom 122.8. Happy Thanksgiving for Jet 318. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. So first of all, let's come over here to the radio. One two two decimal eight. And now we are on the Unicom frequency. Let's increase our speed. 290. We'll do 285 actually. And now we can go all the way up to our flight level. Of 280. All right, we've got flight level 280 programmed in there. Engines are still doing good. As we get a little higher, I'll pitch it down. We're just going to do this whole climb manually. We appear to have gotten rid of a lot of that weather and are getting higher than the clouds, which is good. We are at 12,500 climbing. All right, folks, we have most certainly leveled out. Now let's go ahead and pick up on the speed. We're going to change our speed to mock and then we are going to up it to 7.7 and actually that's closer to that bar than I would like so let's increase our mock to 7.6 now here's another thing that we can actually do um, let's get that straight now here's another thing we can actually do so in the computer's management system, um, there is an opportunity or an availability to adjust your Mach speed. Normally it runs at 0.78 Mach because of the cost index, but I don't like how close that is to this barber's poles, which means we're going too fast and you can overstress the aircraft. So let's adjust our Mach speed to 0.76 and then we can put it into VNAV. So if you come here and you go to PERF and you go to Cruise, and you look at this 0.78, we're going to change it to 0.76. Okay? Then if you want to verify that, come to the flight plan. Now all, instead of it saying 0.78, it now says 0.76. So that essentially you can adjust it so that you don't overspeed your aircraft. You just have to come over right here to this. Make sure that it's on FMS. And now we hit the VNAV. And nothing changes because we've already adjusted our cruise speed to be at 0.76 nothing changes now we're in VNAV so that when we go to do our arrival we will essentially be able to just let the aircraft's flight management system FMS, MCDU, whatever you want to call it, CDU um, handle the aircraft's descent uh, into the Pittsburgh area so for now folks we're going to sit back, we're going to relax and enjoy the cruise and uh, monitor aircraft systems and anticipate our descent. Uh, not that far from now. Let's see if our FMS will tell us about the descent. How long we have to go to expect that. So if you come over here to progress, it gives us some key information. There's three pages on progress. And top of descent is in exactly 39 minutes. 
we have 296 miles to cover to top of descent. You guys see that? So this, these flight management computers or FMCs or multi-control display unit, MCDU or control display unit, CDU, whatever you want to call it, there's several different names for the same thing, really give you some information about your flight and help you manage it so that you are aware of what to expect so that you can effectively stay ahead of the aircraft. All right. Enjoy this cruise time. It looks to be nice and smooth. And, uh, yeah, we are doing just fine. All right, we are still continuing to cruise along. And we have been giving instructions to switch from Unicom to switch over to New York Center. So let's go ahead and make that contact now. All right, we're going to go 125320 on the radio. 125 decimal 32. Zero. Good evening, New York Center. Chapter 318, checking in flight level 80. Chapter 318, New York Center, ident. All right, so we need to come down here and ident. That's what we're doing now. Chapter 318, right of contact, one three miles west of Hancock. Thank you. All right, you can see here we're going down at 1,670 feet per minute. Let's go. Chapter 318, Cleveland Center is closing. Radar service terminated. Frequency change approved. Okay, thanks for your service. Happy Thanksgiving. Frequency change over to Unicom. We'll see you next time, Chapter 318. All right, so we'll stay here. Now let's go ahead and look at our approach and our standard terminal arrival so that we can make sense of all this madness. I'm just opening up the charts in my chart page that will bring it down. We are landing on the haze. So Grace, okay, let me show you. That's my fault. I should have been showing you guys this. Okay, so here's the route. So we are coming from SLT or Slate Run VOR, which we are currently there now. Now we're going to be heading on over to the Eared VOR or Fix, I'm sorry, and then on to the Grace. And at Grace, we need to be expecting this at 10,000. Now let's read what runways. Uh, first of all, let's get the weather. So let's bring that out of here really quick and let's get the weather in Pittsburgh. Okay, so here's the weather in Pittsburgh. Current METAR, the winds are out of basically the southeast at 8 knots. And the altimeter is 2 or 9 or 2, which that's nice, that's a standard altimeter. Everything's looking good. There's some broken overcast between uh, 6,000 feet. I'm sorry, between, looks like this should be 600 feet all the way up to 4,800. It's still 10 miles of visibility, a greater. So not bad. So we'll be landing on a southern runway. Or southeastern runway. So now let's uh, see what available runways are for us. Okay, so at the winds are at 130 okay here's the terminal um, we could essentially come in on 10 left if we wanted to uh, or we could do 10 right which is a longer runway but this runway 10 left is more than long enough so let's go look at the approaches for 10 left and see what we like and it's got an ILS right here for 10 left so we are gonna plan for 10 left folks so having said that now we need to look at our star we're gonna come back over here to the Hazen 6 and we need to look at the instructions for 10 left from Hayes, uh, from Haynes, and we're going to track on 236 to Rusa. So essentially, this is going to be our arrival route right here to come around, and then we swing back around and come on in this way to this uh, runway right here because this is 10 left. 
right there. So that's going to be the plan. All right. And as you can see, we need to decrease our speed a little bit. So, because we have that information, we are just going to do this descent all on our own. So I'm going to increase the range. And there's the range. Now, let's make this go down to 10,000. And essentially now, we can start our nice little descent. Put it in the versus mode. And if we now start descending at 900 feet per minute, as you see, we will be right here at the ear at 10,000, which is where we were supposed to be. And of course, we're going to keep this on the speed. And we're going to go to 290. Which once we slow down, this may change just a little bit. Not by much, because speed is also affecting how we nose down at not, or what 900 feet per minute is going to do because our speed is decreasing. So you can see we're going to get there slightly sooner because we're going slower, but let's let the aircraft stabilize. Uh, we're going to keep this in the standard altimeter setting of 29 or 9 or 2, which it'll just stay on standard. But if we click this, I guess anything at uh, in this aircraft at 299 or 2, it's going to always say standard, which is fine with us, so there's no change there. We're well enough away from the barber's pole, so we're not going to overspeed. Runway's long enough, um, so essentially, and we can coast all the way to the end, so we're going to do a low uh, break uh, once we get there. And again, for fuel efficiency, let's... There, now we're right on it at 10,000. Now what we essentially need to do, folks, is we need to start putting in some nav information. So, the approach for runway 10 left, let me bring this back down for you guys, the approach for runway 1 left, this is what it looks like. We need to type in 111.7 uh, and put in the approach course of 101 and then we will be adhering to these standards um, and instructions via this chart for our arrival. This tells of our radio, radio altimeter minimums should be and all that good stuff down here. This gives us some ILS information um, and uh, gives us everything that we need to know for landing here. This even talks about the different poppy lights which are the visual lights that help us to make sure that we're on the right glide path. So 111.7 and 101, folks, so let's make that happen. First of all, let's type in 111.7. And we're going to do it again. For this side, and we'll switch it over. So essentially now we have the right frequency program new. Now we need to put in the course of 101 uh, degrees. Now, in order to do that, you'll notice in this aircraft, because it's in the full... Um, uh, navigation in uh, or lateral navigation um, profile of our autopilot what we need to do is we need to make our course to 101 but if you see if I change this right now nothing is changing it's clicking but the course is not changing what you essentially have to do is get a little preview so you're gonna hit preview there's the course setting for localizer one now we can change it to where it's gonna be 101 Now that course heading is on 101, and then essentially all we need to do is put it into the um, localizer uh, pairing here. And so we also need to change this to where it will say localizer 1, so the aircraft's navigational um, equipment will take over for the nav 1, and it'll follow any of the navigational equipment's uh, reception of the VOR signal or the ILS signal that we're going to receive once we get to our initial approach fix. Um, which is going to be STOE. STOE is the initial approach fix. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So as we, so this triangle here, okay, is the localizer 
signal radius, if you will. Um, so once we get close enough, you know, as we're inbound to Stowey, we'll hit our approach button. This is where the ILS should become active for lateral and vertical um, centering, if you will, to the runway. Uh, runway 10 left. All right, so I hope all that makes sense. We're continuing our descent down. And uh, we can make an announcement, if you will. All right, and we are, okay, we got to make our announcement. Pittsburgh traffic, JetBlue 318 is descending via the Hay 6 at 13,900 feet, and we are exactly 33 nautical miles from here for landing on runway 10 left for Pittsburgh traffic. All right, you can see the uh, weather engine is updating the most current weather there. Now we're moving in a little closer, so here in just a second, before we get to Eared, we are going to slow this aircraft all the way down to uh, 190. And as you can see here, this is the final approach course here for uh, runway 11. Um, once we come around, and actually you probably won't be able to see everything right now just because of we don't have even runway 11 programmed in yet. Um, so essentially let's square up our heading and uh, let's go ahead hit that again let's change this to the heading mode no change of the heading of course because we matched it up now what we want to do is come down here to our performance um, and we also will need to put in our V speeds but we're not going to worry about that now let's come to nav arrival ILS 10 left is what we said we're taking and let's see if it gives us any other transitions. And it only really gives us R10 left whisk as a transition, but that's radio nav. Let's see, unable cruise altitude. Not quite sure what that means. Let's clear that out. So again, we're going ILS 10. Let's activate that. Now let's look what the flight flight plan says. Okay, there's that story where we need to be at 4,000. So now let me look at the star here. So from Grace Haynes, then we should be going on over to Rusa Tau. Okay, so all this is good. Grace. Haynes, then over to Rusa. So this is actually a good little uh, rival. So now we can activate that. Now we can essentially come back here and put it into lateral navigation. Again, no change. Now we have a nice uh, arrival profile. Now we can come here and even reduce this. All right, now if we really want this to make sense, let's go over to the plan mode. And let's also reduce this a little bit. Now we'll be able to look at the plan here. Okay, and here's the steps here. So essentially you see where the aircraft is coming in. I think we need to reduce the... Uh, So we're going to come down here to Rusa. We're going to do a right turn. I'll take it manually right here because I don't want it to make this turn. We'll come out a little bit over here to make a turn. So we need to make the right turn to hit the uh, navigation correctly. Now what you see here, what looks confusing is this is exactly, so the runway is here. If we essentially do a missed approach, then this line here is showing us that that's going to take us to our missed approach. So, so far I like everything the way it looks let's go back to our map and of course we are essentially going to stay here and let's uh 
increase our range again so we see what we're looking at. All right, now we can essentially start decreasing our speed. Slowly but surely, we'll pull that back. And then decrease our rate of descent to 600 feet per minute. Now one thing we need to do, folks, there's a lot to do when you're landing this plane because there's manual stuff you have to put in. So you're going to come back over here to our performance and we're going to come here over here. Well, actually, let's see how much we weigh right now. So right now, our gross weight at this current point is 97,707. Okay. Top of descent is done, but right now this tells us what our gross weight is. You can also come back here into performance initialization and come over here. And it'll still say what our current gross weight is. We need that information because uh, we have to essentially plan our landing. And if you guys remember, the winds were about eight knots, which is not too bad. So we can essentially land at flaps full. And let's see here. We are landing at uh, 97,000 pounds. So essentially 140 will be our VREF speed. Let's go back and take a peek and see what the aircraft is currently doing now. All right, so we're still doing good there. I think we can stay at 10,000 for a second. And then we'll uh, reduce our, let me check the uh, standard terminal arrival on the Rusa and see, let's see. Okay, so even Grace is at 10,000. So even our next waypoint will be at 10,000. And then once we get to uh, Haynes, or and once we get to uh, Grace, actually, then we can start descending down to 4,000 for sure. Because our initial approach fix is supposed to be, which is Stowe, is supposed to be at 4,000. Um, so we'll just stay here now until we get Grace. In the meantime, we can essentially go back and put our V-speeds in. Again, the winds are at 8 knots. So let's do that now. So if we come back here, now we are going to go to our landing. And let's put our V-ref speeds in. Again, V-ref is right at 140. Landing will be at 149. Our climb out is at 163, just in case we have to essentially get back to where we're going and then flaps clean will be that. So now we have all of our V-Ref speeds in. We can certainly come back over here to the flight plan and start monitoring what we're doing. Again, once we get to Grace, we can start descending ourselves down to 4,000 uh, full arrival into the Pittsburgh area. Now, finally, one other thing that we need to do in order to plan for our arrival is we need to indicate or identify where gate Bravo 29 is. All right, so let me see if we got, all right. So let me, at the airport stuff here again. Terminals facing that way. Okay. Okay, so B29. So essentially up here, this is going to be runway 10 left up here. B29 is on this inner part. So if you take a look around this right here, so if you take a look at the airport information, We'll be landing runway 10 left, and essentially we can pretty much use the whole runway, even if we need to get off on B2 or B3. Then we're going to come down here onto Victor, it looks like, and then we'll be parking in this area here. Now, folks, I think we've effectively started our planning, so let's go ahead and reduce our speed to 250. Actually, we'll just let the aircraft start doing that and let's effectively start descending. 
Oh, and you can see uh, here, remember this aircraft has automatic um, de-icing, so you can see here it's de-icing aircraft, especially because it detects moisture on it. All right, folks, down to 4,000. And I essentially think that descent profile will be just fine. Just because we are still going to be coming here straight. So once we straighten up here, we'll see what that descent profile looks like. Let's maybe bring it down slightly to there, and then we could mess with it after that. And we're going to bring our speed down to 230. As we get ready to approach to make the turn, we'll bring the speed down to 190. And essentially, we want to let the aircraft uh, have the ability to slow itself down naturally versus having to use any you know speed brakes or anything like that, even though they may be necessary. Let's just, uh, I'm going to fix this range again now that we're dialing it in. Now we'll leave it like this for now until we make that turn so then we can start seeing some more of our waypoints. And let's just double check our radio page again. 111.7, 111.7, everything looks good. Let's go in the back and see what the passengers see. And we are hovering and cruising right above this cloud layer. We'll be going in there shortly as we prepare the cabin for arrival. Just full of clouds here. Like I said, I knew there would be weather. However, I anticipated on the weather not producing any severe uh, rain clouds or anything like that that would impede our uh, arrival into the Pittsburgh area. All right, so let's just continue on our descent. Now we are below 10,000 feet, so we should have gotten our lights on, which looks like we left them on the whole time, guys. What's up with that? We literally didn't turn them off. So now they're on. Everything is on and we are prepared for landing or as prepared as we're going to get. We got Rusa in 7.5 nautical miles. There we go. Nice easy descent. into the Pittsburgh area. Pittsburgh traffic, JetBlue 318 descending the Haynes 6, currently at 7,600. We are five nautical miles from Rusa, expect uh, full stop landing, 10 left for JetBlue 318. All right, so we made our announcement. That's all you can do. Uh, it, it doesn't appear that there are any pilots there um, in, the, in that area, uh, but still, you never know. So one could connect to the system, uh, you know, once I essentially get closer, which has happened before where I assume, oh, there's no one, there's no one at that field, and the next thing you know, boom, there's somebody there. But visually looking at, uh, visually looking uh at the field, there is one departure, so there may somebody still be there. Um, and I'm using uh, the VAT, fantastic uh, view. Okay, now we should be able to essentially decrease the range here by one. 
start seeing things a little bit better. Now once we get on this heading and we get straight and direct and the aircraft does everything it needs to do to straighten itself out, we are going to take it manually so that I can get the systems prepared for landing and then we'll manually uh, vector the aircraft to intercept the ILS signal. Alright, we are straight, and as you guys can see, we are most certainly heading into these clouds. We're in the cloud layer now. Let's go ahead and score up our heading. Essentially, you can see it's not dead on, so we are getting winds here. At, you can see here, it's pretty strong winds here. Now we are effectively in the heading mode. Now it's going to be our job to bring the aircraft about up to here and make our turn so we're at least, um, you know, uh, limiting our turn to 30 degrees or left to intercept this point here because if not, the ILS will essentially turn us around. So it has to be 30 degrees or less as you intercept the ILS signal or it will be zero good. All right, folks, we are coming in a little bit hot, so let's start reducing our speed, of course. going to bring it to 190 and we are also going to slow our descent slightly that should be fine at 4000 here because that's essentially where we'll be making our turn for stowey you can see the aircraft slowing down now that we are in the heading mode we're going to go ahead and um in order for this air well first of all let's go ahead and reduce this one now that we can really see good now essentially what we're going to do, we need to put the aircraft to follow localizer 1, so you need to put this, uh, which stands for VOR Vortex slash localizer. We're going to hit it once, now it's on localizer 1. Now the aircraft essentially will be able to pick up the uh, ILS signal when we want it to do that. You can hear our aircraft is saying, hey, we got a thousand to go until we get to four thousand. All right, essentially what I'm doing on my second screen, I'm pulling up our complete uh, I'm pulling up our complete approach so that I can monitor that. All right. Again, the localizer frequency is 111.7 with an approach course of 101. 111.7 we have in, and 111.7 we have in the both sides. So far, so good, folks. Once we start making our turn, we'll bring it down to 170, and then, of course, our final approach speed will be 149 for landing on 10 left. Pittsburgh traffic, JetBlue 318 is downwind of runway 10 left. We are about seven nautical miles from Stowey for full stop landing on runway 10 left again, uh, Pittsburgh traffic. All right, so everything is looking good here too. This one of course over here, they've got the essentially VOR2 in. 
as well. But this side too, you can also have this side follow VOR1. And the reason why it's that color, it's not the controlling side at all. Um, so this is the actual controlling side for our localizer. And you can see the localizer is, is active. So, uh, yeah, you can see these two are active. Once we arm the approach uh, feature, these should turn green or different colors because they will be, or even magenta. I can't remember which color they're going to turn. And then we'll essentially be following that. So we've got localizer one, we've got our heading 101, and we've got the right localizer uh, signal in there. All right, essentially, we are going to slow the aircraft now to 170. And notice down here, we're going to go to flaps one. And you can see this panel here, flaps one, we could have extended to 230, flaps two is at 215. So we can even do speed check flaps two. We're getting ready to start our turn here in a second. As you can see, we got some rain. And uh, we are at the point where we need the best visibility. So now it's time to come up and uh, put our wipers on. So uh, we'll put them on low for now and just see how that works out. So now, folks, let's go ahead and make our turn. So you can see Stowey. And then there's Raccoon. So this is the line that we would have came in if we would have came through, but we ignored this. So once we get a little bit more up, we'll make our another uh, left bank. And even, you know, this is still not considered uh, a whole lot of rain. Nothing that, of course, we can't handle in this aircraft. So we'll just continue to cruise along here for a second. All right. I think we can go ahead and start making that turn now. Now we can activate the approach feature. And as you can see, the localizer is already captured. You see, like I said, it turns to green down here. See where I'm circling? So it does turn to green. Once the glide slope gets captured, it'll also turn to green as well. So essentially what we need to do now that that is captured, you have to hit the approach button one more time. There we go. And actually it's already in approach too, which I should have noticed. So we still have the uh, localizer captured, of course see the aircraft straightening up to uh, make sure this lateral navigation is all squared away. Now once this uh, starts coming down here between Stoey and Raku, it'll essentially uh, let us know that we are 
getting ready to intercept the glide slope. Raku should be at 3,000, so it'll start just probably descending shortly thereafter. Pittsburgh traffic, JetBlue 318, one nautical miles from Stowe. We're on the ILS 10 left for full stop Pittsburgh traffic. All right, and as you can see, some lights off in the distance. That looks like that's uh, the runway we're going on. It may look a little canted right now just because the winds are trying to push us, so we're having to uh, keep this thing uh, where we need it to be. Let's see, for our midge to approach, is at 4,000, so we'll leave that there. We're just kind of waiting for this to come down. If we get halfway and it doesn't do that, sometimes there are glitches. Uh, let's go ahead and slow to our approach speed now. Gear is coming down. And we're going flaps out. As you can see, this turned to green, folks. And I'm missing it by one. We said our approach speed is going to be that. Now let's make sure we're doing flaps full. All right, flaps are set to full. You can see our approach speed, we're slightly behind it. We've got the glide slope, has been intercepted. Let's double check. Landing gear is down. We do have three green indicated here. We've got our brake set to low, and we also have flaps to full down here. There's our rejected takeoff, or I'm sorry, our brakes to low. Full flaps, of course, and our gear is down with the handle down. So now we just sit back and cruise it in, folks. All right, there's the other runways. This is actually our runway. So as you can see, we are pretty much headed straight. I'm going to take the autopilot off once we get to Raku. I'll announce that we are five nautical miles passing Raku for full stop runway 10 left. That'll be our last announcement. And folks, let's go ahead and just uh, take the autopilot off now. Pittsburgh traffic, JetBlue 318, is on a five-mile final for runway 10 left, full stop, Pittsburgh traffic. All right, so... Let's also take it off auto throttle. Now, it's our aircraft, of course. A little bit up on the power. to pitch it down just a little bit trims pull them back on the power a little bit on full visual longer paying attention to the flight director so to speak a little windy and it does look like see that we do have an aircraft there so I'm glad I'm doing my call outs all right we're gonna crab her in just a little bit up on the power slightly Right at V-Ref, a little bit under, but that's okay. Flight low. All right. Flight low. Flight low. 50, 40, 
30, 20, 10. Reversers on. All right. We are going to just go down the middle. Let's turn that auto brake off. And looks like we're going to be on B7, it looks like. Alright folks, that's actually Bravo 3, let's just stop here real quick and get our bearings. Alright, we're going to stop there for a second, we're going to get all of our, and you can see there is another aircraft, that's the other person that was here, I haven't heard anything from him. Let's go up top, of course, and we are going to turn our landing lights off. We're going to turn our strobe off. Let's make sure all of our brakes and everything is down where it needs to go so that we can taxi in. And let's get our bearings. Let's let him taxi up a little bit so that we are not playing uh, aircraft bumper cars. All right, essentially, we are going to taxi ahead. And we're not too bad. We'll either, uh, we can essentially taxi on here and then we can uh, make a left on, uh, or a right, I'm sorry, on Charlie 1 or Victor 1. It doesn't matter. We'll let him taxi up just a little bit and we should be good to go. All right. Park and brake is released. Thanks again for flying along today. It's very scenic, uh, or I should say, ev eventful uh, travels here. There's Charlie 2. We can essentially take Charlie 1. Taxi on around. Essentially, all right, we're going to be looking for a gate right over here.
All right, so again, we're looking for B-29. Which we are about to start getting into the Bravo terminal. That's still Alpha 8. All right, let's look and see. And we did find our gate appropriately. Here is B-29 as promised. So we're just going to ease in nice and easy here. A lot of use of the word ease, but uh, give me a break. I'm piloting an aircraft into the gate right now. So that los pasajeros, or the passengers, can uh, get where they need to go for Turkey Day. Keep it in mind not to congregate more than five people. Alright. Alright, parking brake is up. Let's go ahead and get those 